So, if you want to take your Bible to the book of James, chapter 2, we're going to continue. We, we, uh, I believe we got to verse 25. Yep, 26. 25, I'm going to narrow. No, yeah, no, you're going to start. Oh, I'm going to start maybe all the way back to verse 1. How's that? <laughs> oh. No, we don't want to hear that again, do we? Way, verse one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I guess, um, no, we're going to just back up a couple of <laughs> We just have to because to get the context of what is, is going on here, just for the context purposes. All right, just hold your finger. We're going to go back to uh, to verse 19 and just call right through it, all right? But I just want to say a couple of things. James is not writing about how to become a Christian, okay? How do you become a Christian? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That's how you become a Christian. But rather, how to act like one he's talking about. Not becoming one. See, people get controversial with James and Paul, thinking they're contradicting each other. James is saying, you know, good works, and, James, and, and uh, Paul saying, you're not saved by good works. Talking about two kinds of things here. We do good works because we are saved, not to get saved. But rather how to, having all the correct beliefs about God, okay, listen, will hardly suffice. Even demons believe in God, right? James was trying to say, even the devil believes there's one God. So all the creeds and all the, all the doctrine is just not enough. Real life-giving faith should produce motion. Something should be produced from your faith. That's what James is trying to say. And James minces no words in describing the specific spiritual actions expected of Christians. All right. You with me so far here? Yep. yep. Unlike the Apostle Paul, okay, James was no urbane man of letters. He was a simple, homespun preacher perturbed at people who were not living right. That's what James, that was what bothered James. He knew they were saved, and they're saying, why are you living like unbelievers? It was bothering him, so he wrote a letter about this. His letter covers a wide range of topics, okay, a wide range of topics, applying the Christian faith to specific problems and commanding readers to live out their beliefs. Be humble, James orders. Submit to God. Stop sinning. James is as forthright as an Old Testament prophet. It is hard to miss his point. Modern readers of James face the same dilemma as the first recipients of this unsettling letter. His words are easy enough to understand. Very simple. James spoke very simple. But are we doing as he says? What kind of motion characterizes our spiritual lives? As Luther himself said, you are saved by faith alone, but if faith is alone, it is not faith. Mm. You see it? Mm. Our faith is never, never works alone. Remember Abraham believed God and his faith showed him to be righteous when he put his son on the altar yeah. to sacrifice him. Yeah. His faith put him into motion. He believed God. That God was going to provide. Yeah. And He did it. So this goes to show us in our lives today, okay, when all these problems and trials, and God calls us to do something, he, has, he expects us to trust Him and put it into motion. And trust Him for the outcome. Yeah. Look, nothing can happen in your life unless God ordained it and allows it. All the problems, all the trials, all the issues, even the ones that you make, all the mistakes you make, and all the, you know, all the bad moves and wrong decisions you make, God lets you do them so He can teach you a lesson through them, but He's working it all for good for those that love God and are called according to His purpose, okay? Amen. So you have to understand you're in the sovereign hand of God. When you go out there and you start acting up and you start acting miserable and saying, well, that's like saying God don't, is not working in my life today. He's always at work in our lives. You have to believe that. Amen. And trust Him. Yeah. 
I don't know about you, but I've been on this journey for a while, and I'll tell you what, there's been a lot of bumps in the road for me. A lot of them. A lot of temptation, a lot of testing, a lot of denying myself, a lot of faithfulness, and trusting God, and not knowing the outcome. Amen. Walking by faith, stepping foot in the Jordan, and saying, all right, Lord, I'm not going to revile back when people come at me in the store, at work, I'm going to keep my mouth shut and leave it in your hands. Boy, that works out a lot better than you reviling back when somebody reviles at you. Oh, that was rude. Oh, how can you say that? And this, that, and the other thing. When we revile back, we're showing that our faith is not in God. Our faith is in our flesh. Mm -hmm. And we see how ugly our flesh is. You know why we end up being miserable in a Christian life? Because we were not aware of our flesh before. Mm -hmm. Now we are. Yeah. And it hasn't went away just because we got saved. Now it's showing more. Mm -hmm. But we can see it more. So it's making us miserable because we know now that our flesh is evil. Mm -hmm. Before we were blinded by the devil and we didn't see evil in our flesh. All we've seen was evil in other people. Yeah. It's the world's fault. It's their fault. It's their problem. Now we see that we're part of the problem yeah. when we use our flesh. Amen. Yes. Amen. James is trying to tell us that. Listen, you need to be obedient to God if you want to overcome this stuff. All right, so look what it says in verse 19. So you say you, you, say you have faith for you believe that there is one God. Agree? You, you agree there's one God? Yeah. Yes. Good for you. Even demons believe that. <laughs> so he's trying to say just because you believe that there's one God does not make your, your, your faith strong. It's just a belief. You believe that. So the devil believes that too. Right. The devil's not saved. Right. He believes there's a God. He knows Jesus is the Son of God. He's not saved. Look. And they tremble in terror. How foolish. Can't you see the faith without good deeds is useless? So if you come to church and you get saved and it's not producing anything in you, it's becoming useless. You come and you're miserable because... It's, you're use, it's useless because you're not using it to glorify God. So you're not using what he, he saved you for. God saved each and every one of us for a purpose and a mission. Each one of us. Amen. And when you're not fulfilling it, you're miserable. But most people will not trust God because we do not know Him well enough to trust Him. Now look what it says. Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? Don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown right to be, be right with God by his actions when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? See what he's saying? Mm -hmm. You see his faith and his actions work together. So now you say you have faith in God and then your actions are showing that you don't. That's what he's trying to say. So you're only deceiving yourself. God says, I want you to sacrifice your son to me. And Abraham knew it was God talking, and he did it. Amen. And even his son said, where's the sacrifice? Mm -hmm. Abraham said, the Lord will provide one. Mm -hmm. You see what he's trying to say? It works together. Your faith will show by your actions. So you can say to yourself, how am I acting? How are my actions? Is my faith getting stronger or weaker? Am I trusting God, or am I just going to church, going through the motions, and trusting myself still? Am I just playing church, James is trying to say. Am I just playing church? By going, if, you, if you think that going to Bible study and coming here and they're not practicing any of it is going to do anything for you, you are sadly mistaken. It will accomplish nothing in your life. As a matter of fact, it might make you self-righteous and religious. Well, you need to go to Bible study. Well, by you saying that to somebody... This proves that your faith is weak. Now, only God can want somebody to come to Bible. You know what? You pray for them. Why? We all know the whole world needs to come to Bible study. Mm -hmm. yeah. The devil's got blinders on people. Look, when you act self-righteous and pious, it turns people off and they don't want nothing to do with religion. Can I get an amen, amen for that? Amen. I'm trying to teach you the right thing. We have to represent the Lord right when we leave here. Amen. The right way. By telling people not to do this and not to do that, and he's saying, well, you're just condemning yourself because you do the very same things. 
that you're telling people not to do. And we know it as well. We might not do it as much, but we know that any given time, our flesh can get the best of us, mm -hmm. and the very thing that we told someone else not to do, we do. Amen. Like what comes out of this, like the next chapter we're going to go into from control in the tongue. Look what it says. God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called the friend of God. So you see, we are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. Look at verse 25. Does anybody remember Rahab? Yes. She's the one that had, had the, hid the angels for, in Lot's house. Remember? Look. There's another example. She was shown to be right with God by her actions. When she hid those messengers and sent them safely away by a different road. Now, James is trying to say Rahab was a prostitute. Her flesh, she was a prostitute. Mm -hmm. But she was obedient to the word of God. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what made her right. Mm -hmm. Look, all of us have a sinful nature. What's the matter? I can't find where you are. How can you not find it? Verse 25 of James chapter 2. You're right in there. chapter 1. We're in chapter 2. <laughs> All right. You, you got it now? Yeah. All right. You said you were starting at one again. Yeah, no, we can't. I said verse one. But I said I was only kid, didn't I? Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, we got to give. We need a lot of grace, don't we? Yeah, grace. Mercy, grace, forgiveness. All right. Amen. All right. Well, you want it? You, you got it now? Okay. Look what it says in verse 25. Rahab the prostitute is another example. Okay? So that's how you know that, look, God doesn't save us because there's anything good in us. Okay? Remember Mary Madeline? She had seven demons in her. She was, she was a mess. Jesus got her, got hold of her and saved her. Okay? We're not saved because of, <laughs> listen, we're saved because God, because God loves us. God so loved the world, He gave us one. We're all sinners. Just because Rahab was a prostitute makes it no different than somebody who's a thief, or somebody who's a gossip, or somebody who's anything else in this world. So there's no different level of sin for God. Sin is sin in His eyes. You, you, you break one law, you're guilty of them all, He said. So that's why we don't judge. She was shown to be right with God by her actions when she hid the messages and sent them safely away by a different road. Now, just as the body is dead without breath, so is faith, so also faith is dead without good works. So you come here and you say, I have great faith in God. Do you really? Is it shown by your works that you do have faith in God? Are you leaving things in His hands? Are you being obedient to His Word and what He's telling you to do? when your enemies come up against you, when you're, when you're being impatient. Are you being obedient and saying, I'm going to leave that to God. He's trying to make me patient. <laughs> you did a study on that. Right? You did a study. She did a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. Man, I love that study. That was good. How many of us need patience? Yeah. Well, I just, I just want to give you a little newsflash. You're not born with it. No. Patience is a fruit of the Spirit. Now that you're born again, you do possess patience. Amen. And you can be patient if you have faith that you have it. You see, it takes faith to, <coughs> even when you, you know, when you're feeling impatient. Mm -hmm. Well, faith is not a feeling. Just because you feel impatient doesn't mean you can't be patient. Amen. God's testing us and saying, look, go beyond your feelings and trust me by faith. Have patience and watch how it works for you. And watch the peace it produces in your life. Okay, so I got to drive 15 miles an hour all the way in a 35 mile an hour zone because somebody doesn't know the speed limit. <laughs> it's usually we go over that, not under it, right? Mm -hmm. So think about driving three or four or five miles at 15 miles an hour when the speed limit is 35. By the time the first or second mile comes, you start to like, all right, are you going to turn? Are you going to turn? What's going on? Are you, are, or, or am I going to lose it? 
right? I'm being patient. So, see, human patience runs out. It runs out after two miles. Yeah. God's patience never runs out. Saying, "All right, God is trying to show me something here, Lord. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to leave it in your hands, and I'm going to just change the channel of how I feel, and I'm just going to trust you." You see the difference? Now, before I would be able to make it a mile. Now I can make it four. Wow, no good. I'm doing well. I can make it all the way up Middle Spring Avenue without <laughs> sw swinging my hands. <laughs> really good, Dad. Now, has anybody been on Middle Spring Avenue in the morning? Every day. Okay, I have to drive from one end of Middle Spring Avenue to the other end of Middle Spring Avenue to get to work in the morning. And I have school buses. Mm -hmm. People that are not paying attention, nice. people fixing their hair, doing their makeup, whatever they're doing, on the phone still. Mm. So that's, I think that the, I think it's like Mill Spring Avenue, maybe from North Providence to Saturday, like three, three and a half miles, maybe four. <laughs> but I'm starting to make it to the Saturday Circle without losing it. <laughs> now I'm just going to get past that loop there, and that's it, and I'm, gonna, I'm home free, and then up 44. But you understand, it's a process that takes time. We don't say, all right, I was impatient, now I'm patient. Mm -hmm. It's something that you have to practice and master. Mm -hmm. See, it's something that we have to, we have to do. It's an action. When, when, you, when you go to bat and practice, you start swinging the bat, and you're not that good at hitting the ball. But the more times you come, the more hits you get, the farther the ball goes, and the more accurate you become. That's right. If you're not trying, if you're not using patience, say, all right, I'm working on patience today. I'm going, I already got going to work for Jesus locked in pretty good. I already know that. After years of saying it, it's finally coming to fruition. I don't have to keep saying it. I'm just doing it. Now, here's another process. Patience. He's working on that. Mm -hmm. That's going to take another few. You understand this is a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah. And then when you fail and you get mad at yourself and get mad at everybody and say, oh, I should have known better, mm -hmm. you, you're already putting yourself all the way back again and stop from jump. Yep. Mm -hmm. You just say, all right, look, I made it. In that. Yep. I made it three extra seconds today. Hallelujah. <laughs> Everybody's looking for mountaintop. When we listen, all the little victories. We're working on. We're work, we're a work in progress. Listen, we're becoming like Jesus over time till we go home to be with Him. Can I get an amen for that? Yeah. Stop beating yourself up and getting legalistic and rigid, saying, "All right, I'm being patient today." As soon as you're not patient, you lose it, and it's all over. And your testimony for God gets lost too, because nothing good starts coming out of your mouth. Now you're mean and miserable, mm -hmm. and now you're snapping at people because you didn't. You didn't succeed in something. Oh, are we ready to go to chapter 3 now? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Ooh. Hmm? Now, James is... I love James because it's very practical and he yeah. talks about ethics, okay? No. Mm -hmm. No. I had taught you we're saved from the penalty of sin, we're saved from the power of sin, right? And we're going to be saved from the presence of sin once we go home to be with okay? The presence of, when we get saved from the penalty of sin at the cross, it's done. Whenever you accept that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you can't improve on that. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward. Now, the salvation from the power of sin is what James is talking about. Our walk here. God is helping us to crucify our flesh so we can live more godly and upright lives here. He's training us. We're on a training ground here. Amen. This is like boot camp. So you have to understand, people that are serious about walking with the Lord are going to face plenty of adversity on their walk. Now look what it says in verse 1. Controlling the tongue. This is the the smallest part and it's the hardest thing to control mm -hmm. okay that's what he's trying to say look what he says dear brothers and sisters not many of you should become teachers in the church for we who teach will be judged more strictly mm -hmm. 
Believe me when I tell you, much is given, much is required. Not only judged more strictly by people, but by God, too. Believe me, it's no easy thing to do. Just come up and say, oh, yeah, I want to do that, too, yeah? <laughs> Indeed, we all, look what it says in verse 2. I love James. Indeed, we all make many mistakes. I'm going to bring a box of pencils in, okay, and give each one of you a pencil, and each one has an eraser on it. Okay? So each of us, all of us make many mistakes. So James is trying to say, stop judging your brother next to you. You are a fault. You have faults too. Okay? Stop it. You make many mistakes yourself. When you stop, when you stop judging other people, you're saying that I don't make mistakes. You do. Mm -hmm. And that becomes self-righteous, and you're acting like you're God, by telling them, correcting them. When you correct somebody, <laughs> you're acting like you're God and they're not. You're, you're correcting them for their mistakes. But who, who's going to correct you for yours? Right. Yeah. What about your mistakes? That's, right. That's why he says not to judge. Look what it says. For if we can control our tongues, we would be perfect and can control ourselves in every other way. Now, all of us have issues, right? things that we, we lack self-control in certain areas and stuff. The Bible tells us if we can control what comes out of here, we can control every other part of the body. And that's the least thing we work on, what's mm -hmm. coming out of our mouth. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop doing this, and I'm going to stop more, and I'm going to stop doing this, and I'm going to stop doing that. Mm -hmm. But I can't stop what's coming out of my mouth. Get it? Mm -hmm. If we can't get hold of this, we can't get hold of anything else, the Bible says. Oof. Can't say amen. Say, oh, James is awesome. Mm -hmm. Look what it says. If we could control our tongues, we would be perfect. What does perfect mean in the Bible? Mature. Mm -hmm. So if you can't control your tongue, the Bible is saying you're very immature. It can contr also control ourselves in every other way. Look what it says in verse 3. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. Yeah. You know that big, beautiful horse? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All it takes is this little thing they put in its mouth, mm -hmm. and they, they hit it one way, and it causes pain, and it causes them to go in a direction. That's what it's saying. That little thing causes... And then it's saying, and a, small rut, and a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go. You ever see one of those big cruise ships? Mm -hmm. Yes. It, the size of the rudder that turns that ship is, compared to the size of the ship, is small. But it turns the whole boat. That's what he's trying to say. Even though the winds are strong, in the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches. <laughs> <laughs> is this still like condemn anybody? No. no. It's just trying to, it's just rea reality. Okay? All of us claim to be Christians, mm -hmm. and we're trying to walk with the Lord and say we have faith, but what comes out of our mouth shows that we don't. Right. It's okay. Look, we're a work in progress. Mm -hmm. We're here to get better, not bitter. If you're in here getting bitter and snarling 